What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We take on Eastern Michigan in this game. They're fighting for bowl eligibility. This is our last game. They're trying to go to six and six. We're trying to keep them out of the bowl conversation by staying perfect. Right now we're 10 and 0, number two in the nation. So we just need to keep on fighting and prove that we belong in the national championship game. Clear skies here at the Doit. This is our last home game of the season. So it looks like they're going to kick to us. We're going to get the ball. And like I say every game, cannot take anyone lightly. we got to come out strong. Got to start hot. Every team that plays us is looking to end our undefeated season and make a statement. So Stevens is going to kind of set, let his blocks develop, and he's going to run to the outside and pick up, honestly, a pretty nice gain. So we're going to do what we always do here on offense, and that's just start in the shotgun, go Falcon fast, try to establish a run first. The direct snap's been our favorite play the last few weeks. And look at it. Go right here. Stevenson's got a huge hole on the right side. He's able to get a big first down right off the bat, and we're hopping right back on the ball. Going to drop back, hit him with the pump fake. Lost one over to Blake, who's able to make a great grab. Catches it over. We're about at the 35-yard line, and we're hopping right back on the ball. So here we go. We're handing it off the middle. Stevens is getting a good gain. Right now, the offense is definitely slowing down a bit. And as you can see here, they are able to make us kick a field goal. They stop us. It's fourth and five. We're not going to go for it right now, so we're just going to settle for the three. And this should be one of the last videos where I'm recording the voiceover after. I know it's not as good and I don't like doing it either. So I'm gonna really try not to record unless I have my mic ready to go to get the original audio. So Eastern Michigan's gonna hand it off here. He's gonna break a tackle and he's gonna get a pretty solid gain. You know, we know we gotta blitz often and we gotta blitz early. We don't want stuff like you know, that to develop into long runs. So by blitzing, we're able to swallow up, make them punt. So right here, as you can see, we're driving. Second and two, we're on their half of the field. And I'm going to fire it over to wide receiver 20. He's going to make a nice one-handed grab just in bounds. So we're still in the shotgun. Looking to do a little play action here. Going to roll to the right. And we're going to fire one over to Gay, and it's going to get picked off. I mean, I threw it into triple coverage. Not my best throw. You know, probably only our second or third, maybe fourth pick on the year. But we're feeling good. We got him pinned down. We're sending the dogs, and look at that. We're able to swallow them up in the backfield. They're still pinned way on their own, you know, territory. It's third and nine now, so we're just looking to make a stand here. Bring a couple guys blitzing. And he's able to fire a giant pass over the shoulder. Stan makes a grab. Our guy goes down, and he's able to take it all the way to the house. It's a 94-yard touchdown pass for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Eagle versus Falcon here, and they get the best of us. He's beating our guy like a drum. Couldn't make the tackle. I think that was Anderson maybe on that side. And their guy Stan starts celebrating early. Takes it all the way to the house. And for the first time since week two, we are now playing from behind. Kind of crazy. I mean, our second game against Nebraska was the last time that we've trailed. And now Eastern Michigan, who's looking to get into a bowl game, goes up on us 7-3. to three. So the offense, you know, we know we got to refocus, resettle. Got all day to throw. That's what I love to see when our offensive line is just blocking the heck out of their guys. We're able to find the open man. Stevenson's able to catch it for a nice first down. Then we're going to do the draw, and they're going to swallow it up. I mean, their defense knows they got to play out of their minds this game. So no surprise here, you know, we put Bubba in just to run a couple option plays. So he's going to take it, 
and he's going to split him, and he's going to get a really nice gain here, but then he puts the ball on the turf. It's a fumble. Honestly, looking at it now, it's like he was probably down, but you can't challenge in this game, so it is what it is. It's a fumble, and <laughs> for the first time in a while, the first quarter ends, and we are losing. So Eastern Michigan's offense is back on the field, and they're looking to keep pushing the momentum. They know if they can get up to a big lead, and our defense is able to get a huge swat there. So their offense is coming out out of the huddle. It's third and seven. We're looking to get a big stand. You know, every week we know our defense has to play well. But most weeks we're also playing with a big lead. And unfortunately we're not able to get them here. So the defense definitely needs to hold here. I mean, going down two scores would be really detrimental. We pressured him, but he's still able to get off a good throw. I was able to get him with Jackson right before the first down. So it's forcing a a fourth down situation and I guess they just don't trust their kicker or they figure hey we're on the road against the number two team in the nation let's go for it on fourth down let's make a statement so our defense is able to swallow up I mean we knew we had to get a stand here to give us some momentum and that's exactly what we got so the offense is on the field we're going no huddle we want to move quick we really need to get some points so Barry's getting swallowed up but he finds wide receiver 20 over the middle of the field who get, breaks a tackle and gets a really nice gain. He's having a good year. That was his 25th catch. He's got three touchdowns. Barry sees nothing really developing. Takes it for himself. Like a 20-yard gain. I mean, that was a huge run for, the, for Barry. And we're just going to stick to the tempo. High pressure, high-paced offense. Referee kind of drops the ball there. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to give a draw to Stevenson. He's going to follow his blockers. He's going to cut up. And, I mean, the run game has just been so crucial for us all season long. Right back on the ball. Barry gets the high snap. He's able to move to his left. And he dumps it over the shoulder. And they break it up. Great play by their defensive backs to get in there. But nevertheless, we're able to keep driving down the field. And we get to about the two-yard line where we're just going to get under center. Give it to Ruiz, who's going to get stuffed. Thought that was going to be an easy touchdown. It was not. So we're hopping right back on the ball. You know, goal line situation here. We're just going to keep pounding it in. Even if we don't get it here, we're going to go for it again. But this time, our line's able to get a good push. And Ruiz is able to... Oh, no, he gets... <laughs> I totally thought we were getting in the end zone there. Nope, he got stuffed again. Their D-line is holding so strong. But like I said, if we don't get it, we're going for it. We cannot afford to keep playing from behind. You know, this is our season on the line. This is the national championship on the line. So Barry takes it on a quarterback keeper, and he's able to find the end zone. Huge, huge touchdown. I mean, the last thing you want to do is let one of these teams come into your stadium and play on their pace. You know, we want to make them play to our style of football. So Mitchell's going to line up. He's going to boot the extra point. Stays perfect on the year. So they know they want to go get another score before half, but... Our run defense is going to get up to him again. Dean and Jackson there to get a little community tackle. So we're going to burn a timeout. You know, we want to force them to give us the ball back. They got a guy in motion. I'm going to stick with him. But it's a run. And Stanley's there to swallow him up. I mean, we blitz every single play. I can't stress it enough. We're going to burn another timeout. Like I said, we're trying so hard to get the ball back here. It all starts with this, stopping them here on third and ten. And luckily we're able 
to force the issue, cause them to drop it. So they're going to punt. And here we go. We're in shotgun set, a little pump fake. Barry, nothing's developing, but he's got a lot of room. So he's going to take it himself. He's going to take a big hit, but he's okay. He's not going to fumble. We're still trying to move quick. There's only a minute 30 left, third and one. Give it to Stevenson on the draw. And he's going to fire through the gap in the line, get us a big first down. Still in the shotgun, going to do a little play action, pump fakes, and we're going to take a big sack. I mean, the Eagles are coming at us hard, and they're playing really good defense. So now it's third and 18. we got to try to make something happen. We're going to drop back. Barry's going to read. Nothing happening. He sees a huge hole, and he's going to dive into the middle of the field, which was exactly what we wanted. We wanted to set ourselves up for a nice little field goal here because we're only up three. So I figured, okay, don't turn it over get a little bit like we got about nine ten yards on that rush which makes the kick a lot easier so we came out in shotgun here just kind of knowing we were going to just sit here and waste time but didn't want to like ice our kicker so we're gonna let the clock run down and then use our last time out of the half so now here we go field goal units out there mitchell such a stud he's been a kick great kicker all year so this one shouldn't be too bad for him. Line it up, snap the hold, and he's going to put it right through the uprights. Another 40-plus yarder to add to the season. So they're going to get tackled on a kickoff, and the first half is over. We're only up by six. Pretty crazy. We're playing Eastern Michigan, and at the end of the first half, they are our closest MAC competitor by far. I mean, you see the yards there? We outgained them by a good amount. But we had two turnovers. We had a pick and a fumble. So, you know, kind of let them a little bit back into the game. So now they're only down by six. So we need to start off strong. Defense has got to come out and it's got to play stellar. I'm loving our old school full orange uniforms. So we're just sitting here, we're like, all right, you know, we got to keep blitzing. That's my coaching philosophy is either stop the run or the blitz pressures the quarterback. And I think those two things are huge. So as you can see here, they're looking like they got no... No, no running backs in their formation, so... They're going to come out in the five wide. We're just kind of in like a normal dime package. And we're going to get a huge sack. The D-line really stepping up. That's a that's the kind of play we need to start the second half. I mean, only up by six points. This game is so much closer than I'm sure everyone thought it was going to be. So the defense got the sack, was able to force them to punt. So now the offense comes out. And they've been the ones that have been real slow in the first half. So coming out with some vengeance, and Barry's able to shoot one over, and Gay runs a perfect route, gets some separation. You see here, Barry just fires it. Gay makes the grab, takes the hit, but is able to hold on to the football. You see his season there. Only 14 catches, but he's up over 300 yards. He's been kind of our deep threat all year. And then Stevenson takes a big lick. He's still having a great day. I mean, he's averaging four yards a carry, but... Taking a lot of big hits today. So third and inches, we're going to get the jumbo set out. And Stevenson with a huge hole, and he just gets tackled. I mean, they barely got his foot. That would have been a huge touchdown for us. And he had the room to do it, too. So we're back on the ball, ready to move. Get everyone settled. Barry's going to take it. He's going to shuffle a little bit, and then he's going to fire it. Find wide receiver 20. You know, he's, a, he's kind of our big target guy. Doesn't go too far down the field but he makes the catches. And I thought about kicking it here. I'm like, oh, fourth and inches, like I'll kick. And I was like, nope. Like we are the number two team in the nation. We're on their like eight yard line. Like we gotta go for this. We have to. So gonna run the triple option. They get to Morris and Barry's just gonna keep it and only get like two yards there. 
but all we needed was inches, so it's enough for the first down. So we're going to get close, bring back out the jumbo package. We're going to hand it off to Stevenson here, who's going to follow his blocks and find his way into the end zone for a huge score. Put us up by two scores. Let us take like a little sigh of relief. Nothing crazy. We're not taking our foot off the gas by any means. But getting up by that second score with the way our defense has been playing all year and the fact that our offense is still explosive. I mean, we can go down and score in two minutes any drive where things are clicking. So Mitchell's going to put this one through. And like I said, it's a happy drive for us. Took three minutes off the clock. Got up by another score. So they know they got to up the tempo a little bit and they're going to start with an option, but... Like, I, I can't stop preaching how much I blitz. It's just imagine every play is a blitz, unless it's third and long, because that's the philosophy that I run. We've done a great job recruiting a solid secondary, coaching them up, and so I'm not worried. If the quarterback only has three seconds to make a throw, I don't think he's going to beat us. See right there? He gets a, you know a good amount of yards, but we just have so many guys going to the football. So then you see here, it's third and long. We're going in the dime package, and everyone's got a man. Only the four down linemen are moving. So that's when we really need them to get pressure, is when there's no one blitzing. So they have to fight through blocks. And he kind of does. I mean, he like should have tackled the quarterback. The quarterback bounced off him. Now watching it back, I noticed that. But he's able to get the pass off, and they're able to catch it for a big gain. One of the sixth catch of the career for that kid. So they're still moving the ball. Third quarter's almost over. He's going to take it on a draw. And he's going to get some serious yardage. He's going to break a tackle there. Break a second tackle. Break a third tackle. And he's moving the 15, the 10, the 5. And we're able to stop him. So their quarterback, Henson, who's really just been keeping him alive, is able to, you know, be, get shifty and find his way down to like the four yard line. So we're selling out on the blitz here. We don't want them to score. They're gonna run it. And like I said, we're selling out on the blitz. We're gonna stop them. And that's gonna end the third quarter. Going into the fourth, it's a much closer game than anyone could have thought, especially considering that they're knocking on the doorstep here. Line up with one guy in the backfield. Backup quarterback Gardner is going to hand it off, and he's going to get stuffed. I think their starter was gassed or he got hurt or something. Third and goal, still just selling out on that blitz. If they're going to throw, they're going to throw, but they're not running on us. They got a guy in motion. They're going to give it to the fullback, and he's just barely. I thought I beat him there, honestly, but they say he's good. He's in, and with the extra point here, it is back down to a six-point game. And at this point, I mean, I'm a little worried. Only, you know, we're in the fourth quarter. It's go time for the offense. We need another score. No team has been within one possession None of our MAC opponents have been within one possession going into the fourth quarter. So we're going to run a little play action. Barry's going to roll to his left, fire it over, and wide receiver 20 comes up with another huge catch on the sidelines. He's just able to stay in bounds here as Barry takes his time, shuffles over, and 20's able to grab it before getting pushed out of bounds. So second and seven here, back in the shotgun. Barry's going to take the snap. He's got plenty of time, and he's going to fire it over to Blake, who catches it up the middle and brings us all the way down to the four-yard line. We're going on the ball, calling for a run up the middle. We got Morris in the fullback there. But I was like, you know what? Blitz is coming. I'm going to call out of this. Maybe they're going to blitz all, and they do. They do what we usually do. They sold out on the blitz, and Morris gets his first career catch and coincidentally, his first career receiving touchdown. Look, I take it here. Just takes an absolute lick, does Barry. But he's able to get the throw off. They sold out on the run, so it was wide open. As long as he didn't drop it, it was good. And it was perfect. So I'm like, all right, we're going to go for two here, trying to make it a 14-point game. 
figured, all right, I'm going to try to pump fake, take it for the draw. But their D tackle is able to fight off his block and stop us short. So their offense, you know, they know it's go time. They're down by two scores, three minutes left. Nothing set in stone here. And he's able to get off a huge pass to his guy Murray. Pick up another first down. They're going no huddle right now. Obviously, the clock's a big issue. Drops back, fires it, and gets another good catch. They're still moving. They're still grooving. I mean, we're, we're giving up some decent chunks, but our, the key is to just keep... Keep the big plays from happening. You know, you don't want them to score quickly because they're probably going to have to kick it outside anyways. So Henson takes it, but he's going to get swallowed up. I think that was Parker was able to fight through his blocks and get a huge sack. I mean, that was a monster sack for us. Henson drops back. He's got a guy right in his face, and Anderson makes a crazy interception over the shoulder. I mean, that was one of the better picks I've seen all year. So right now we're just in run out the clock mode, give the draw to Stevenson, bust through the huge hole in the line, gets us to round midfield, and they're going to start burning their timeouts here. It's fine by us. They only have one left, so we're pretty much able to take out as much clock as we can. Another handoff to Stevenson, who puts it on the turf, and they pick it up. So showing a little bit of signs of life, but it's, the game should still be over. A minute 28, and they're down by 12. So it's pretty improbable, but, you know, the defense still can't can't just throw in the towel here. we got to come back out on the field and do our best after Stevenson put it on the turf. And he's got a wide-open guy. Good yardage. Looks like they're going to spike the ball here. Yep. So at this point, you know, second and ten, we're still feeling really good. Minute left, we're up by twelve. Henson takes it, fires it, and the defense is able to come up with a nice deflection. It was also his first game of the season, so it's like really interesting to watch him play. You see there his season stats. I mean, those are all from this game. He gets another big first down, but unfortunately the ball squirts out. And Ray is able, well, I mean, unfortunately for them. The ball squirts out. Ray goes down on his knees, gets the ball. And so as you see here, I put in McKinney just because Stevenson, like, did fumble the last time he was out. So I figure, all right, put in the, the third string running back. He won't fumble. Get him a couple touches. See right there, he shoves off a block, falls forward, and they burn their last time out. So, I mean, not much to say here. Really nice win. I mean, closer than most thought, but a win's a win. Now they give him McKinney, big first down for the lad. Just keep bringing out the boys, reminding myself to put Stevenson back in the game. <laughs> or at least for next time, because if we stay going no huddle, McKinney will still be out there. And he actually gets, you know, only a couple yards, but as you see there, Barry gets player of the game. 149 yards, I think three touchdowns that said. So we're just sitting on the ball, hike it with 27 seconds, and McKinney, another big run. I mean, the dude's doing really well. Just a few carries he's getting here. But we're going to go no huddle. As you see now, the play clock's at 20, game clock's at 17. So that's all she wrote. Good win for the boys. You know, this Eastern Michigan team is one of the better teams in the MAC that we have to play, at least. Not not overall, but, I mean, they're going to be 5-7 and seven after this loss, which is... Better than like the one or two or three wins that some of the other teams have. 
So 26-14 is the final score. We stay undefeated. And obviously now that the whistle has blown, all eyes are on Toledo. We got to go into the battle of I-75, and we we got to get a big win. I mean, Toledo's, if any of, the, of our teams are going to take us down in the MAC, it's going to be Toledo. Take a look at the stats here. I mean, totally ours offense were pretty close. I mean, this was a close game for a reason. Only 12 points separated us. First downs way in ours. I mean, they, they were a big play team that game. They only went four for nine on third downs, which hurt them. They won the turnover battle, which hurt us. As you can see the box score, I mean, we were trailing in the first quarter, but then we put up 17 unanswered. Then they got seven back, but we were able to get that last touchdown in the fourth to kind of ice the game. I mean, Barry had a solid day. I mean, 12 for 24, 150 yards, one touchdown, one pick. You know, surprised he actually got player of the game, but you know how they always mess it up. Sometimes. Sometimes they'll give it to the losing team. Stevenson, solid day. I mean, he had the fumble, but over 100 yards, got the touchdown. Barry was able to run for a touchdown as well. Their quarterback ran really well, 9.5 per carry. Look at our run defense there. I mean, their starting running back only averaged 1.9 yards a carry. Wide receiver 20 hauled in five catches that game for 70 yards. Usually we don't have anyone get that many catches in a game. Offensive line, another great game. Mitchell, another great game. Defense, Dave Anderson had that crazy over-the-shoulder pick, but really good team game. I mean, we only gave up 14 points. I'll take that every single day of the week. You know, thanks for coming. We didn't punt at all that game. Ain't that something? So just kind of sim through the rest of the week here. So there it is. We got to play Toledo. They're 8-3, and three, 35th in the nation. So they're a really good squad. Offense, you see they're 15th in points per game. Alabama won the uh, Iron Bowl there. Buffalo with a big win over Ball State. Moving to 7-4 they are. Cal is still winless. Wow, TCU beat ECU 70 to nothing. Mitchapalooza, kind of a bad loss for them, losing to Kent State 28-12. But now both teams are bowl eligible, so maybe we can get more MAC schools in there. UCF falling to Miami of Ohio. Toledo coming off a win against NIU, only by seven points. So, I mean, we beat NIU pretty good. So you never know. Oh, wow, Northwestern, just their second win of the year over Illinois. Big upset. Michigan also upsetting Ohio State. First time in five years they've won that rivalry game. Good for them. Michigan State beat Penn State. I mean, they've been, they only have five wins, but they seem to be against all the better teams. West Virginia upset Pittsburgh. Fresno State continues to roll. Vanderbilt still struggling, just one win. It came against Kentucky, one of the other SEC schools. Everyone knows I got my eye on them for the coaching carousel. Just, you know, if I want to take a bad SEC team, make them great, I feel like that would help cement my legacy as a coach. But not going to think about any of that stuff now. We got a lot more left in the season. Got some big games to win. And this week will decide the winner or who, winner of the MAC West, who goes to the MAC championship. So I'll see you guys all in that one. Peace.